Welcome to the podcast of top executive coach, Tony Mayo. This podcast is a conversation with one of Tony's clients, management consultant, Ron Diamond. Clarity of what we're committed to and how we speak about it that makes a difference of whether the day is worth having or just something you're surviving. And how do you how do you keep that in the, in the how do you you know make that present? How do you create yeah. that all the time? How do you keep that in the forefront? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure you, there's a, there are ways you do it. What do you do? I have uh, uh, you know you talk about affirmations. I have this sense that that I really do, also don't like them. They feel very inauthentic to me, so I don't do that. Yeah, it's inauthenticity uh, that really gets. Yeah, me. I don't believe it, so it's not real for me. Uh, I have things written down that, to remind me. I have, um, you know, the internal voice reminds me. Um, and I think just stepping back and thinking about a time when I have made a contribution to a client or made a difference in a business or, you know, helped my own business, um, that typically does it for me. Yeah, that's what you do. You, you write things down. You uh, Posters are great. Things that are sincere to remind you what you're really up to. Yeah. And also, Ed, the more you tell people this is what your life is for, what you're devoted to, what you're working on, the more they call it forth. It, it's part of creating that space. Yeah. So the space can be tangible things of, of posters, reminders, cards. Uh, I like uh, talismans, putting something in your pocket that will mm. remind you of uh, a habit you want to change or something you're up to. Mm. This technique of using a talisman came to me when I was engaged to be married. And of course, whenever we went out and visited with people, they'd want to see Christine's ring, engagement ring. And I thought, well, I started to joke with her. So why do you have something? You know, you, you've got a ring to show that you're engaged. I've got nothing. I'm just, there's no difference yet. When we're married, I'll have a ring, but now I don't have anything. So she bought for me this beautiful white marble heart, about an inch in diameter. And I would keep that in my pocket. Oh. And the original idea of it was when she showed off her ring, I would pull out the little white heart and show uh, it to people. Oh, wow. That's sort of a gag. Yeah. No, not really. I didn't see it as a gag. But what I noticed was through the day, I would sort of absentmindedly, the key phrases I hear myself, absentmindedly, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't being intentional in choosing. I'd stick my hand in my pocket, I'd feel this heart, and I'd think... I'm getting married. Mm. In my whole future, my intentions, what I'm committed to, would be present. Mm. In what I chose to do in the next moment, what I said, or the mood from which I approached the task at hand, would be determined by, I'm in love, I'm getting married, some great things are happening in my life. And this, so this is something I've recommended the client and used myself many times. Uh, Take some object, put it in your pocket, and whenever you notice the object, you remind yourself, oh, I'm not going to complain today. Mm -hmm. I made a promise I'm not going to complain. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm going to reach out and speak to strangers, mm -hmm. which is something else we should talk about soon because i got some great coaching on that that I've been enjoying. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are all these structures to keep you in contact with what you're committed to so that you, you language what you're up to in a way that gives you life. What are you grinning I'm about? I'm just reminded of we, we did a little contest. Who was in that? You, me, Christine, a couple of other folks on the, the bottle of wine on the desk because we caught ourselves whining a lot. Yes. This is like a year ago. So yeah. No more whining. I thought that was, that's, so that's a good example. Yeah, that, and that's a hard one to sustain. Yeah. I don't know that anybody ended up mastering are, their domain from that one. <laughs> are you whining right now? I'm just curious. A little, dis a little disappointed. Yeah, a little disappointed about that. Um, but it's, I don't know if you had this experience. Well, what was your experience during that period when you had the bottle of wine? I still got it there. My experience is, uh, just to remember, my experience was, uh, you know, I, didn't, I played the game because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a joiner and I like to play the game. I didn't really think I was a whiner. I, to, I, I found out how much I was whining. Yeah. Shit. That's one of the things I noticed right away. Yeah. I thought I was just discerning. <laughs> so you had a fine bottle of wine. <laughs> no, I was perceptive about what was wrong. Yes. Yes, I had a very thick layer of, of self-congratulation uh, around my <laughs> whininess. <laughs> and then once I noticed that, I thought, well, I want to play the game. I'm, I think it does help. Something happens, and I have to speak about it in a way that's not a complaint. Yeah. 
that's an interesting little challenge. Yeah. Given that I'm committed to uh, supporting people, having them be expressed, have great lives, and some something bad just happened. Yeah. What? Do, how do I talk about it? Yeah. And it was a really great exercise. It's like exercising a muscle. It's interesting, and I know you. I know you are a student of speech acts, especially from Searle. We should probably talk about that too. Yeah. Professor John Searle of Berkeley. Yeah, and you just what you, one of the things you just said is I have to. And what I remember is uh, that you, you get to me. choose to. And I think that's there's some real power in that, too. Yeah, but, I should have said, I have made the choice. To. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't have to do anything, right? There's a scene, I don't remember what movie it was, but there was a, a an inmate in a prison, and the guard was trying to get him to go do something. And he wasn't cooperating. And the guard said, you have to do it. And the prisoner looked up at him and says, the only thing I has to do is die. Mm. I said, that's, that's pretty true. You know, mm. as far as we know, that's the only compulsory uh, requirement of being alive. Yeah. Uh, and that's the choice. And just being present to that choice. I mean, we could do a couple hours on that. Yeah. But so many clients have found it useful when I bring that up. Uh, I had one client who was nowhere in flow. It was all overwhelm. It's just too much going on. Uh, children, business, cash flow problem clients, landlord issues. I mean, it was a very convincing tale of woe. Mm. And she said, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And of course, overwhelm is a judgment. It's an assessment. It's the kind of thing when we're meditating, you just sort of know, oh, that's an assessment. Let that go, get back to the present reality of it. So I want to bring her back to the present reality. And I said, well, what is it you have to do? She said, well, I have to figure out a way to get these bills paid. I said, no, you don't. She said, what do you mean? Does everybody pay their bills? Well, if they did, I wouldn't be in this cash flow position. <laughs> so you don't have to, right? I said, no, no, but I'm, I'm going to. I said, why? Well, that's what I've chosen to do. I've made this promise. I'm gonna, this is, and, this is gonna, and I said, well, you made the promise, but you can renegotiate it. You can walk away from it. I said, yeah, but if I do that, I won't. And essentially said, I won't get the future that I'm committed to. Ah. So, oh, okay. What else do you have to do? So I have to pick up my kids at school and take care of them. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> I said, of course I do. I said, nobody ever just walks away from their kids, puts them in foster care or leaves them in, with a relative and never comes back. I said, well, yeah, I guess people do that. I said, so you don't have to. I said, well, yeah, but I want to. I said, oh, you don't want to. <laughs> so actually, I do. You know, I, I like being with them. I like seeing them change. And you give me the whole list of... And we went through the whole list this way. There's nothing she had to do except die. And she wasn't committed to that <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and there was this shift that was palpable over the phone. I could feel her shoulders going down and her breathing shifting. And the tone of her voice was different. Like, oh, I don't have to do any of this stuff. I can see that some of them are very clearly connected to the life I want and believe is possible. Some of them aren't. Some I can postpone. I'm not procrastinating. They're just not today immediately supporting the future that I'm committed to. Mm. Huh. I said, okay, so what are you going to do next? She said, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'll do this. And, and tomorrow it, I'll look at it again. Yeah. Amazing. And she called me a, a week or so later and said, it's, it's been a fantastic week. Wow. Went from being overwhelmed, hopeless, something's wrong. It shouldn't be this way to getting stuff done. And then she said something. She said, and it's, it's a weird coincidence. You know, after about a day of this, yeah, things started to happen. You know, one of my big receivables came in and this other company wants to partner with us on that. And it was just this list of stuff. And you know where I'm going with this with the, the distinction of space. When you're overwhelmed and compelled and put upon, that's a certain space. Mm -hmm. It's not going to attract tasty deer. You know? mm -hmm. It's going to attract nasty stuff. But then she started hearing, feeling, having space of, I'm living a life that's I'm committed to. You know, I'm loving my family and enjoying them. 
uh, the business, this is the way it looks when you're growing a business. Mm. So when you're in the mode of, I'm growing a business, then things happen, are attracted, show up in this space that grow the business. It's not magic. It's just that you notice them more. Uh, people notice how you're being and they want to be part of it. They want to be part of something that's successful and going towards the future. And it's the space. Wow. It just happens so often. And I forget for myself. Yeah. Many is the time I'll, I'll get off a coaching call with a client and think, you know, I haven't been doing that lately. And put it back into place. Put a, a marble heart in my pocket. Right. Hang up a poster. Right. Call someone like you and say, Ron, I noticed this about what I was doing. Yeah. You know, call me on this next time. Yeah. I have little reminders that'll pop up in my daytime from time to time. That's a good one. I like sure. that. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. More information is available at TonyMayo.com. We appreciate your comments, suggestions for future topics, and most of all, stories of how you applied the coaching. Our email address is podcast at mayogenuine.com. This podcast is the property of top executive coach, Tony Mayo, copyright 2011.